So did you guys see that thing that I texted you about the submarine that disappeared yesterday? Yes, dude. That's crazy. Have you been following this? I, I've been yeah, checking the news bit. periodically all day long. I mean, the search is getting more and more severe. Still, after nearly 24 hours, no sign of the sub that's, you know, off the coast of Newfoundland looking at the Titanic. It's it's really taken, I think, a lot of people. It's probably the most text I've ever gotten about a news story, to be honest. And I think it's pretty crazy. part of that is obviously everyone's desperately you know, rooting for the five humans that are on board. But I think it's also very easy to sometimes imagine yourself in a situation like this. You, you want to know something really crazy? Especially you, Forrest, yeah. I was invited on this trip. I'm not kidding. Shut up. I what? swear to God. So Ocean Gate is a company I've been talking with for years because I've been trying to get a sub to do deep sea shark stuff. And uh, basically what they said about nine months ago was, look, we can probably make it work come out with us on a trip, jump on a sub ride so you can feel it out, you know, and then you can piggyback off of another trip of ours at some point and do some shark work. And I was like, wow, wow. that sounds incredible. But as you guys know, I'm supposed to have a kid in the next like 35 days. So I couldn't make this trip, but I was invited to be on the boat and tag along, which was an incredible invite. And one I was very reluctant to turn down because as you guys probably saw, it's a quarter million dollars a ticket to go on the on the yeah. on the sub and basically the way ocean gate um put it was like come with and if there's space on the sub you'll jump on if not you just hang out on the boat and i was like great like i'd totally do that but yeah i uh, potentially could have been on this trip wow man like that God. that's insane it's dude i mean and you would have been for sure had your wife not be having this that's something you would oh, I, I could never see you passing up that opportunity no I would be thrilled to experience it. But, you know, back to the more dire situation, not to make this about me, but can you imagine being in this small capsule 13,000 feet underwater mm -hmm. and then, or rather imagine being on the control ship and then poof, no more communication, yeah. which is what happened, you know? It's how like much, out of a movie. How much do you know? A lot of, there's not a ton of information at this, at this point, except for right. some of what's going on in the, in the, the rescue efforts, um, it, a lot of it at this point, it makes sense, seems to be focused on searching the surface, right? Like they may have lost communication surfaced and nobody knows where they are. So there's, there's planes flying overhead and things like that. Do you know much about how, what the mechanism is? Is there an antenna or something like that could be, that could be disabled where it could just be a communication, uh, thing? I, I really don't. I assume just from doing some of the deep water bruv stuff that we've done in the past that the way it works is there's a very high powered, uh, it's like sonar receiver or really sonar transmitter. And I'm sure Brosners that listen to this will know the answer, but I believe there's probably a really high powered sonar, sonar uh, transmitter on the sub. And then they're communicating in Morse code or something along those lines, mm. because as I assume everybody knows you can't do Bluetooth. You can't do satellite. You can't do any of that stuff underwater. There is no right. there, with technology. We have Starlink. You can do high screaming internet anywhere on the planet, but we still can't Bluetooth something more than about a foot underwater, which is pretty insane. If you think about it, no wireless transmission underwater. Too. There was yeah. a mention in one of the first news articles that broke about that. They do utilize Starlink for on the boat. some. Yeah. I yeah, don't know what part I, of the I communication that, that is. Um, I don't know, yeah, but, but yeah, I, I, but I would think yeah. that they probably still communicate in Morse code because sonar works off of a ping, right? And you can ping back like beep, 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 beep you know, whatever. Right. Um, I don't know though. I really don't. I just know that it would be unbelievably terrifying. You know, I imagine it went something like this, right? It's just like with a plane or a boat or anything you lose or like walkie talkies. You're like, Hey, can you hear me? You know, you lose comms periodically and you're like, ah, no big deal. They'll be back any second. Right. right? And then yep. a second went by and then a minute went by and then 15 minutes went by and it was probably like, uh Oh, you know, and then I don't know at what point the coast guard got called, but as you may have seen coast guard from Boston, from Canada, uh, pretty much all over the place uh, from New York, they're all coming in to try and help, which is, uh, I mean, that's a good thing. I, I sure hope they recover yeah. it. It Do did you... say in the article, they have 96 hours of life support down there. So all hope is not lost. And I think that's an important thing to, to, to bring to light here, which is that, you know, they've been gone for 24 ish hours. They have 96 hours of life support. You know, I'm sure there are incredibly intelligent people on that sub 
that are doing everything they can, assuming they're still alive to get to get it back to the surface. Do you sure. think do you think it's possible? <laughs> and if this sounds ridiculous, let me know. But could it could an animal that far down, like disable the antenna or something or disable the communications and they're trying to get back up? It's a good question. I mean, you know, look, there. Patrick was telling, we were texting about this a little bit earlier, and he was pointing out the giant squid attacked a Greenpeace sub in 2014, oh. I think it was. Uh, wow. So these things have happened before. It's certainly not the first thing that came to my mind. And, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of like the movie hypothetical of like a big squid coming in and ripping the thing in two, but right. rather, you know, maybe they bumped into something. Maybe the sub got stuck. Maybe a squid or a sperm whale or something rubbed against it and knocked sure. the communications off or knocked the buoyancy control off or who knows. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, like if you think about it, a sub is no different to an airplane or a car or your damn iPhone. And you know how many times a day that thing glitches, right? And, uh, right. you know, yeah. uh, the good thing is when you're in an airplane and the airplane glitches, you can glide down. When you're in a car and the car glitches, you know, you slowly glide down. The problem is if you glide down in a submarine, you don't want to glide down. You know, you want to glide up. And so yeah. a glitch is a really bad thing. Now, they could be totally fine. They could be slowly doing decompression stops with a major safety protocol. Because it's not like you can rock it back to the surface, right? Everybody's right. head would explode. 13,000 so, feet. Yeah. 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 So who knows? I mean, I it's a, it's a crazy thing. I've I, I'll be honest. I think it's the first time in probably a year and a half I've had the news on on my television. Usually I consume my news, you know, through the Internet, like every other person yeah. our age nowadays. And I've had the news on all day, just keeping up with it, just like hoping that they find the sub. If yeah. you would have accepted the offer and they said, you know what, buddy, there's there's a spot squeeze in. What would you have perceived the risk level to be on? sort of what's a uh, really a tourist mission uh, zero. Uh, something to cater really zero zero i wouldn't have yeah. even thought twice same, about as, a, it. Like, same as a commercial flight yeah yeah exactly right which is never zero but i would have thought zero you know you're paying two hundred fifty thousand dollars to go on the sub uh hamish harding who's a fellow member of the explorers clubs on the sub i've met him once very very briefly at a dinner and you know i would have thought nothing about it i would have been like great like i i would have been so elated with excitement like the first time i got in a helicopter I wouldn't have right. even considered for a fraction of a second that there's a situation in which maybe we wouldn't return to the surface. Yeah. I think being in a submarine plays on a lot of normal people's fears, right? It's claustrophobic. It's five people packed into a 20 foot, 21 foot long submarine. You're completely out of control. I mean, you think you're out of control on a plane. I mean, God, a submarine, yeah. you don't know anything about yeah. how it works. Yeah. Um, even though they do tr put them through a lot of training and whatnot. Um, but I think that's why people are so invested in this story is that it's, it's sort of easy to picture yourself there and, and it's, it's, you know, exceptionally easy to really be rooting every hour now that they've given a timeline on how much potential right. oxygen they could have. Um, but if they hopefully are bobbing around somewhere at the surface, Right. They can just open what I I've seen the old submarines. I don't know if this one has one, but the, you know, the porthole that opens at the top <laughs> and just breathe right. fresh air. So, um, and don't what a forget, wild story. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but don't forget that last summer, the same ocean gate sub exploring the Titanic got lost for a few hours. So this isn't the first really? time this has happened. Yeah. I don't know if you know that David Pogue was on the, uh, on the sub and he, he's, he started like a Twitter hype about it when he got back up and he's like yeah we got lost and everybody freaked out but that was for i think two or three hours you know now we're going on 24 hours and the news only really broke early this morning because it had been 12 or 14 right. hours so it's not the first time it's not totally out of the equation or you know totally out of the realm of possibility that everybody's alive and well especially knowing there's 96 hours and they're lost maybe maybe they've come to surface you know it, people that don't go off offshore will never understand this Something massive. I mean, mass. A cruise ship will disappear out there. I don't mean disappear right. like sink and nobody sees it. Like you can be on a boat and be looking at a cruise ship, turn around, like man your fishing rod for thirty seconds or a minute, turn around again, it's gone. And it's like That's between crazy. the swells and the waves and the fact that you just have like three hundred and sixty degrees of panorama, it can just it, it's crazy. It's hard to explain, but things in the ocean just disappear even when they're on the surface is my point and so hmm. you know maybe maybe they've surfaced somewhere you know radar hasn't found them the, the electronics hmm. are out i don't know i i'm 
sort of sounding like a hopeless optimist here, but I just, I just, I hate it. I want them to survive. I feel like it, it has a bad rap for exploration. Uh, Hamish, who's, you know, a pretty amazing uh, eccentric explorer slash billionaire dude. Like he's a, not that I know him well, but he stands for good things as an explorer. You know, it's like, this is the worst case scenario. Yeah, for sure. Especially for the future of submarine exploration travel, like these, you know, doing it as a recreational activity, people are going to be scared. Yeah, of course. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. For all those that yeah. were about to drop 250 grand on a recreational sub <laughs> <laughs> The price will come down eventually. <laughs> yeah. Well, so Forrest, final thoughts on sort of what we have noticed is a lot of people commenting on s- certain news stories and things like that. Like, oh, maybe, you know, it's a small sub. Could it be an animal? We don't know anything. Uh, the odds that it completely incapacitated a submarine you're saying essentially zero but the odds they may have knocked out a communication tower or antenna or something it could be i'd say the likelihood is small that it's animal related nonetheless it is a possibility right it's more likely mechanical failure but it is certainly a possibility down there big squid big sperm whale it is summer months now it is certainly a possibility that some kind of animal run-in could have caused this however I would say it's highly, highly unlikely. Yeah, probably the least likely scenario. Right. Well, hopefully, first of all, I will say, still is, I believe, plenty of hope that it's just the communication and that they're right. in the, a vast area. They'll find them on the surface. Right. Um, you know, but uh, I am glad that that you didn't go on the trip because uh, you're one of my best friends. <laughs> Thank you. Me too. <laughs> I'd normally make a joke right here, but this isn't the time nor the place. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, Hopefully and, we'll uh, have uh, next next time we record better news. An update on it or something. And Peter, I'm glad you're not on the sub also. Thanks. <laughs>